Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we are checking out the latest update of the game. So welcome to update 29.1. So this is the consistent collisions James Wedd and Planescape in uh, update tweaks. So as we can see here fragmentation we've updated how we determine the number of fragments during collisions this allows fragments to last longer in simulations with numerous collisions and makes collisions more consistent across different simulation speeds so sounds pretty cool then more highlights the james webb telescope has been added to the ad panels so we've got a new object to um check out and then the solar system live view planets moon spacecraft simulation now has seven additional spacecraft including the james webb space telescope surface lock is now a manual toggle oh that Thank God for that. Yes, that is good. Because, yeah, remember, every literally all the videos recently, whenever I zoom in into an object, I'm like, oh, God damn it, surface lock keeps turning on. But it looks like now it does that automatically, so I don't have to keep turning it off. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. And then surface lock is now... So it turns on automatically when you're using planet scaping or laser tools. Okay, fair enough. Cool. Okay, cool. So... Obviously, the main thing I want to check out is this. So this is the main thing, other than collisions. But there's also this new simulation. Now, this is going to be pretty cool. So, live view, planets, moons, and spacecraft. So, as we can see, the date down below at the bottom is 30th of the 1st, 2022. So, that's the date I'm actually filming this. So, yeah, it's the 30th of January. I forgot um, you, the Americans, they put the... Um, the month before the date but normally we'd put date month year so that's obviously a different way around to what i know but right what do we got here so our solar system is home to eight planets four inner four outer and the asteroid belt between mars and jupiter and trans neptunian objects notable dwarf planets okay so we know we know all of those guys okay cool this simulation also shows eight artificial objects currently orbiting in our solar system including the parker space probe orbiting the sun voyages one and two in interstellar space and the tesla Roadster. Oh yeah, I remember the Tesla Roadster. That's still out there somewhere. Right. So, we're in live time as well. So, as we can see, so this is 11.29am. That is the exact time I'm filming this on Sunday, the 30th of January. So, this is exactly where the stuff is right now. So, here is Earth. So, our closest planet to Earth right now is Venus. So, there it is. It's over there. Right. So, you've got Earth there. Looking good. Then you've got the moon over there. So, you've got the moon. So the moon, as of right now, as of filming this video, the moon is there. So it's on the right-hand side of the Earth. So there, there it is over there. Cool. All right. Nice. What's all that over there? Oh, there, the moon's a Saturn. Okay. Oh, they look really weird. What's all that about? I think that's our um, realistic. There you go. It's because we're on enhanced. So you can see all the objects. So we'll go realistic. Cool. All right. So there's Earth. Right. So go back to labels. So James Webb Telescope. Okay, so this is the new object um, added in the game. So let's check it out. Right. Ooh. Ah, hello. That's looking really cool. That is a cool looking object. So here it is. Uh, we'll go on flashlight just so we can see it a little easier. So there it is. Obviously, it is quite dark, but it's such a cool looking construction. I mean, look at the, look at the shape of it. It's cool. That is really, really cool. So James Webb Telescope, so there it is. So currently, as of the second I am filming this video, so James Webb is on a very um, crazy orbit around the Earth, but there it is. So it's further out than the moon at the moment, but still in orbit of Earth. So that's Earth. Then, obviously, the closest planet to Earth at this current moment in time is Venus. Then you have Mercury. Mars is on the other side of the sun at the moment. But going to the sun itself, so here's the Parker probe. So we know this object's been in the game for a while, so that's currently over here in the simulation. So let's see here. So that's currently, is it? It's inside the orbit of Venus, but not inside the orbit of Mercury. Okay. Then we got a Bepi Colombo over here. So here it is, this one. I don't remember this one being added to the game, but here it is. So that's another probe um, in orbit as well. So there it is, looking good. Nice. So that's also orbiting the sun. And that's actually closer than where the Parker probe is at the moment. So there's the inner solar system. Now moving out, we've got the Tesla Rosa. So that's currently outside the orbit of Mars, almost in the asteroid belt areas. But yeah, okay, so that's uh, got an orbit between sort of Mars and Earth distances. Okay, pretty cool. So the Tesla's still chilling out there in space. <laughs> pretty cool. Okay, so now we're taking a bit of a jump. So Jupiter. So we still have Juno. Juno should be around here somewhere. So where is Juno? There it is. So Juno around Jupiter. 
So that's on an orbit like this at the moment. So as you can see, it's got a pretty uh, eccentric orbit there. So if we zoom into Jupiter. So there's all the Galileo moons. So it has a very, very close uh, orbit with Jupiter there. So it's going to fly right past Jupiter at some point. So that's uh, pretty cool. So there we are. So now, after Jupiter, remember, Saturn, Cassini doesn't exist anymore. So there's no object or well, no human object currently around Saturn in orbit. So there we are. Cool. So zooming out. Obviously, we don't have anything at Uranus or Neptune. It doesn't mean anything there for a long time. Now, on to the distant, the distant, distant objects. So New Horizons is the next, uh, next object out. So here it is. So obviously it passed Pluto in 2015, it's now 2022, so we can see it's left Pluto long behind now, it's in the Kuiper Belt, past the Kuiper Belt objects, and it is um, starting to leave the sort of solar system area, so there's New Horizons, so it's on a long, long voyage, so it's flying, uh, flying out of the solar system now, even further out. And these are obviously the uh, two legendary voyages. So first off, we've got Voyager 2 after its encounter with Neptune all the way down here. So Neptune has long moved um, in its orbit since Voyager encountered it. You can still see Uranus and Neptune. If you reverse time, they would line up roughly where Voyager is at the moment. Um, but here it is. So Voyager 2, obviously very, very distant, very, very old, still functioning, an absolute legendary machine right there. So there it is. So that is um, how far is this from the sun? This is live time, remember. So as we can see, 129 AU away from the sun there. So pretty cool. So what we can do is we can accelerate time and see how far everything is in, say, 100 years time. And see how far away the voyages have gone. So it's pretty cool. And then Voyager 1, the furthest man-made object and also the fastest um, of these probes here at the moment, I believe. So Voyager 1 all the way out here. So this is 155 AU from the sun. So comparing that to Voyager 2, 129, and this is at 155. Because remember, Voyager 1, it left after it met Saturn. It never went to Uranus or Neptune, Voyager 1. It, it went to Saturn and then it went upwards and it is now in this position. So pretty cool. But now what we're going to do is obviously we're doing live time at the moment. So this is exactly where everything is as of this moment in time. But if I speed up time, let's see where everything is, say, Let's just go as, can we go, how fast can we go? Ah, no, we can't go that fast because we've got all the moons in the solar system to simulate. So that's, uh, that's a bit annoying, actually. But oh, well, that's fine. I mean, I'm sure in 100 years, obviously, these will just be a tad further away. I mean, 100 years isn't really much in the grand scheme of things, is it? So there you are. But let's just get a lineup of all the probes um, together here. So all the way down here, so we can see who's the largest of the probes as well. A little comparison with the probes. So all the way down here. Obviously, the probes are going to be the very smallest of this list. So, we've got all the moons. This is the entire solar system, practically, for moons. So, all the way down here. So, the largest is actually Bepi Colombo. It's a very large machine compared to all the other ones. Then you've got Juno. Then you've got James Webb. Then you've got the two Voyagers. Still pretty cool. Then you've got Tesla. All the way down here. Parker Space Crew. And the, new, the tiny little New Horizons from 2003 when that, uh, when that was launched. So... Very, very small little New Horizons, but pretty cool for how far away it's gone. But yeah, there's the full list of all the objects. So yeah, this is a Bepi Colombo. It's a pretty big machine. So there it is. Cool. I mean, it's uh, not too much smaller compared to this moon of Saturn. I mean, this moon of Saturn ain't very big. So there you go. And that's the whole solar system there. So pretty cool. I like it. So there's the uh, that's the new simulation. Definitely, that is definitely the highlight of this update i believe obviously james webb's um, a new object added in here as well so that's also pretty cool but then the only other thing in this update because obviously this is just a point one update it's not a full new update so it's got um updated collision physics so we'll have a little look into the collisions and then obviously as we saw um when you zoom into an object it doesn't enable the surface lock anymore which is very very um very very nice indeed so there we are so for instance if i was to add an object in uh, where are we come on Add, add, come on, come on game, behave yourself. God, it's always so slow when you open the object menu for the first time. Right, so if I was to spawn Earth in, so place it Earth there. So now, when I zoom into it, it doesn't enable that stupid lock-on thing. So if I press this button here, then it would. But now this is automatically disabled. So, perfect. Because that's very, very useful when you're trying to zoom and just check things out and then it just does that. <laughs> it's so annoying. So, good thing they fixed that. Good thumbs up from me there. That's pretty cool. So, I like that. But now, just seeing um, the way collisions work, 
So they put in their um, updates note here. So let me just have a read. So there's also a few updates with the planetscape and buttons, but I'm not really going to go uh, in depth with those. So yeah, it says we have revised how we determine the number of fragments to spawn during a collision. The result is more consistent fragmentation across varying simulation speeds as well as overall smoother performance and long lasting particles during numerous collisions. We've improved the underlying tech of how we um, draw projected paths, object distance lines and references while adding objects. The issues fix lines on certain resolution computers as well as adding individual customization for each. So, okay. But so it's mainly just yeah, a slight change with collision stuff. So what we'll do is we'll do a series versus Earth. Um, I think that's a fair sort of uh, collision. That'll give us quite a big explosion. Where, whereabouts is series? Series? Is it down here? I always forget where series is. There it is, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have a series just go into the earth. Oh god, that's going really quick. So that's so that's doing that. All right, play. Okay, so that's gonna crash into the Indonesia sort of area of the world here. So there you go. All right, so there's the collision. So we've got obviously a lot of fragments. All that's gonna fly and crash into Earth as well. A lot of it in the Pacific Ocean. Some of it's even going to the other side of the planet in the Atlantic and America area. So. Okay, so let's see how that uh, sorts itself out over a long period of time. So the serious collision used to cause more damage than that, so it looks like that's uh, turned down a bit. Okay, so there you are. Okay, so let's try something a little bigger. So let's go to the moon this time. So back to the moon. Place the moon there. Oh my god, all right. Oh, I just thought it just time. So that's crashed roughly into the, uh, where almost where the dinosaur um, asteroid went. So there's the moon. Go into the earth. That's obviously going to cause a whole lot more damage in series. So there you go. So that's obviously causing a lot bigger fragments there. Okay. So let's see how that sorts itself out. Yeah, that's uh, incineration right there. How hot that is. So there you go. As we can see, all of the other other parts of the world are getting bombarded by these huge fragments and remains of the moon. So pretty crazy stuff there indeed. So there you go. And I'll see cool it all down and what we left is a massive punch of holes in the surface of the earth i mean look at the state of that i mean is that completely wiped out america oh my god oh my god it has whoa there's no america left i mean there's a tiny piece of canada i mean canada and alaska they're like the only remaining pieces and all of america has gone from the moon look at that god that's um really insane also the rest of the world has taken a beating as well a massive pummeling of objects so yeah, poor old Earth. There we are. But now let's we'll go to a, a big, big collision now. So we're gonna go Venus. We're gonna have some more Venus in, and then we're also gonna have Neptune over there. And we're just gonna see. So the collision fragments. We're just gonna see. I mean, it's not really a noticeable difference, I don't think. But I mean, we'll just we'll just see what it looks like in this version of the game. So here you are. Venus versus Earth, so big, big collision there. Obviously, Venus will lose that fight out. Obviously, Earth, the whole thing's going to get engulfed now. That's a lot of part. Whoa, look how many particles that caused. Jeez. Obviously, Neptune's taken a massive pounding as well of all those material, all that material. But, I mean, the amount of collision. Look how many fragments Venus and Earth made. Let's do another one quickly before... Um... Let's, do, let's, throw, let's do all the inner planets. Let's throw all of them in there as well. We'll throw Pluto in for fun. There you go. Okay, so let's... Uh... To see all of that, all the collisions that makes as it crashes into Neptune. There's Pluto versus Mars as well. Huge, huge collisions. Look at all of that particles. So Mars has gone in. Mars went in quicker before or after. Did. But there you are. So Neptune, it also eats them all up. Obviously causing a huge, huge um, rotation problem. Look at all that particles. That's really cool. I love that. I love all those smoky clouds. That's cool. So Neptune is almost like Uranus. It's tilted on its side in some ways. Look at that. But it's getting quite a wiggly sort of rotation. But yeah, it's kind of like it's got a bit of the Uranus going on with that rotation on its side there. So speed up time. Look at all that all that material. It's been sprayed. Look at all that. You can see it all just in the background of the milk. All that material just going all over the place. So let's just do control D, get rid of it. So there it is. Now control D, that gets rid of particles, right? There you go. So what's happened to poor old Neptune? So look at it. Oh dear. So it's yeah, tilted on its side. So it's got quite a weird orbit. Look at that. Pretty insane stuff. But yeah, there we are, guys. So that pretty much does it for this um for this update. So as we saw, it was mainly just um I mean the main highlight for me is definitely that cool um 
solar system simulation of all of the, the live view. I think that's a really cool addition, having the live view of how everything's going on in that exact moment in time when you open the simulation. That's really, really cool, I think. So that's really cool. And obviously, James Webb Telescope, another human object, is always a welcome addition as well. They're good for size comparisons, I have to say. They're really, really cool. So yeah, definitely a thumbs up from me um, for this mini update. Before we finish off, we will do a performance test on my PC, and we'll see um, see how this update sort of performs. Because I did it in the history of Universe Sandbox, so we'll see sort of how this um, how this update performs. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what we get. Okay, right. So still got the old generic. Um, I mean, this this simulation here with the two stars and the gas giant. I mean, that's that simulation's been around for so long in them um, the previous Universe Sandbox updates. Same with this simulation with the Earth and all these moons. That's a pretty crazy one. We can see there's a bit of lag going on there. You can see a few lag spikes. So that's quite a big simulation. It does really put your PC to the test, this simulation. Or these uh, simulations. So there's the Milky Way and Andromeda. So you can see the black holes in the middle now. They're pretty, uh, pretty cool. Okay. Jupiter. Oh, this is one of the classics as well. Yeah, Neptune vs. Saturn. One of the oldest simulations in the game at this point, I think. So that's pretty cool. All right, and then obviously the, the last one was always the moon getting hit by uh, asteroids and stuff, so there you are. Cool. Remember in the other updates where the moon always bugged out when it got hit, but it's got quite a, that ball of water literally just made a pile of water on the surface. That's really cool. Nice. So there you are. All right. So let's see, how, how does the game result in that? So 39 FPS. Oh, and my PC is pretty, pretty decent. So I mean, oh, wow. Okay. We'll just send a, just send that, why not? So there we are, guys. But yeah, that does it for update 29.1. So there you are down at the bottom update 29.1. So yeah, really go. hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 24,000 subscribers now. As yeah, we hit 23,000 subscribers last week, guys. So a huge thank you to everyone for that. That's absolutely awesome. And yeah, I'm really, really glad um, you guys are still enjoying my videos. But yeah, if that all said and done, let's even go for 50 likes on today's video, guys. Subscribe for more. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Have a great day. Goodbye.